All right. Today's news, we got big AI stuff going on. Sam Altman of OpenAI was fired. Uh, there's been a, some updates for the economy and inflation. And I found this really awesome uh, study that was done that is on employment and the relationship between uh, employer and employee. So if you're a salon owner or if you're a rising stylist, it was specific to the generation of Gen Z. Uh, definitely want to stick around for that. Okay, welcome back to the Hairdresser Strong News and what does it have to do with you? We at Hairdresser Strong believe that all stylists and barbers are entrepreneurs, whether you want to admit it or not. We must stay apprised of the news that impacts our business and clients. We should also stay apprised of current events so that we are able to have easy, informed, and sophisticated conversations behind the chair. This elevates our success, our perceived value, and our esteem amongst the public and potential clients. In turn, this provides a form of security in supporting our prices and giving us pricing power. This way, we can all have a strong business and lead the life we want to. Okay, let's dive right in. I'm going to share my screen. If you're listening on podcasts, you can just listen up. You don't have to click on the links, but if you want to, they are there for you. Okay, so... Big time AI, biggest AI company in the world, most important, most relevant, uh, just dropped their CEO, Sam Altman. Sam Altman is the media darling of the face of AI, and uh, that's him right there if you're watching. So uh, what happened? Well, first of all, let's um, let's learn a little bit about OpenAI. So one, OpenAI is ChatGPT, so think of that, like he... Like ChatGPT, if you don't know what a ChatGPT is, you should definitely go to chat, G as in Gabriel, <laughs> P as in Paul, T as in Tom, chatgpt.com. Go check that out. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below. Okay. Uh, the hottest company in tech is imploding after the shocking removal of its superstar CEO, Sam Altman, under still mysterious circumstances. This is an article in Vox.com uh, by Sarah Morrison and Peter Kafka, and it's titled Why OpenAI Blew Up and Why It Matters. So this is the scoop. Sam Altman runs uh, the business and uh, OpenAI started as a nonprofit and they needed some more money. So they opened up a for-profit arm. That for-profit arm had a profit cap. So if you're interested in business models, this is really interesting uh, because I've never even heard of a for-profit business that has a cap on profits uh, and is governed by a nonprofit board mind blown if anybody is interested in that please shoot me a dm on at the on instagram at the hairdresser strong show or leave a comment in the description below uh, i'd love to talk to you okay so what's the deal it turns out that um the board of open ai was just basically saying Hey, like, what's going on? What are you working on? Why are why are different people uh, starting to like scale back their uses? I guess uh, Microsoft told some people to like scale back the use, um, and then also um, I think it was Discord. Or, um, anyway, point is uh, there is some unknown about the data usage, and OpenAI, the nonprofit arm is created to think about the safety of the human race as it uh, and creating safe AI. So there might be some challenges there between that board and the CEO. We'll find out. I'm sure next week uh, when I give you the story, I'll give you the rest of it. But have uh, understanding this and maybe even click checking out this article is a good idea because when you, when you go into uh, the salon and this comes up, you being able to talk about this is really pretty awesome. It sh shows a level, a level of being informed and, you know, sophisticated. If this is not your bag, then you probably aren't going to be listening to the news again, because uh, this really here is like one, what is happening? AI, the most important technology to impact your business. And if it hasn't been impacting your business, then you need to get out there and start using it. If you want to talk about AI, uh, let me know, leave a comment below, shoot me a message. Um, I have a buddy, Corey from hair to uh, he is uh, really into AI, so we could set up maybe a conversation about that. Um, okay, so that's really important. Also, it's really important to understand, I'm going to kind of talk to you a little bit about 
the um about open AI the business so you can like talk about it. Open AI needed money. I'm gonna be a little repetitive. They needed money. Altman took over as CEO in 2019 and it established a capped profit arm, allowing investors to get up to 100 times a return on what they put into it. And the rest goes back in to the business, which is interesting because that means that you the uh, idea of a business being solely about profits isn't the case in this case. Like, yes, they want to get their 100x, but like how long is that going to take for them to get that money out? And, you know, that if it takes... Anyway, the point is, you know, a lot of businesses, you can you can have astronomical returns and that's usually lining the profit profits of the like the top, top, top of the of the country. So so is this this is super interesting and I'm serious. If anyone wants to talk about this, let me know. Otherwise, you know, when you're in the salon talking to your cl customers and uh, you can let them know that. Uh, the corporate structure was actually man managed and run by a nonprofit and ask them what they think about a business uh, having a board that is a nonprofit board. That'd be really interesting. So anyway, um, Sam Altman went to Microsoft. Eventually, that's the last thing I saw. He was like fired without any notice. They just called him into a, a, a Microsoft meet and um, they fired him. And then they tried to get him back and he had a list of demands. And then he said, and then they, they, they didn't keep the demands. And then all of his uh, employees threatened to walk out. 300 employees threatened to walk out. I'm sure there's going to be more to come next week. So that is the biggest story in AI that's happening right now. And uh, staying apprised of it is really important. Okay, next, U.S. Treasury uh, yields are a little changed. Uh, so the Fed had a meeting. I talked a little bit about it already last week, but the me the minutes were released. And um, there's some people kind of sifting through it. And they had a chance, like the experts had a chance to decipher what the Fed is thinking. Remember, the Fed controls interest rates. Interest rates are being jacked up to get inflation to come down. The idea here is that if uh, money is expensive to borrow, say you want to expand your business or you want to hire more people and you need to put it on a credit card or or take out a loan or or you want to do an, like an extension of your business or buy more or buy new buy new chairs, uh, anything that you got to borrow money for, it makes it hard hard, which makes you think maybe I'll just wait, you know, and then if you're waiting, that means that you're not bidding or for a product or you're not going out and buying a product. And if there's less demand, then then that means that the 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 products and services, if there's less demand for them, they got to bring the prices down. And so that's the concept here if with inflation uh, is you raise the rates. So the rates are up, but we want them to come down. At least I do. Uh, how about you? Do you want the rates to come down? I mean, if you're if you're retired and you're on fixed income, you probably got a raise with this inflation. And, um, and if you got money in the say in like a money market account or a, a high yield savings account or a CD, you probably love this. Uh, however, for the rest of us, we want to buy a house and expand the business and, um, you know, go on a trip or whatever. And uh, money's expensive right now. So um, basically, the conclusion of the meeting and the minutes is that the Fed doesn't expect people to need to um, be worried about rates going up. So rates hopefully will be coming down next week, next year. Um, but unless some sort of, basically the minutes said, unless there's some sort of shock to the system, then we should be okay. All right. Last but not least, uh, 73% of Gen Z say they'll resign if they don't get regular feedback. So what is it like giving, uh, your rising stylists, uh, feedback and rising stylists, Gen Z's, Gen Zers out there, if you're listening, what is it like getting feedback? Because according to this poll, it says that uh, if you don't get feedback, then you're going to leave the salon. Um, but also at the same time, like, are you, how do you give feedback is a whole nother question because, you know, we don't, no one wants to feel like they're being personally attacked. However, you know, salon owners feel free, give the feedback because they want it now. And if you don't give them feedback, then they're going to leave you. However, this is the this is one of the most awesome things I saw in a while because most of these articles are written in favor uh, of the business owner or they're written in favor of the employee. And this article does neither. They the it's saying it's saying employers 
step it up. You're not used to giving feedback on a regular basis. You don't even know how frequently these people want it. Well, it's if you don't adjust your practices to check in with them on a more frequent basis and give them feedback so they can feel like they're continuing to grow, there's a 73% chance they're going to leave you. However, check this out. If you're a rising stylist and you want that feedback, according to this study on CNBC, it says, while your manager should ideally be the one to set up the meetings, it, you should be proactive in seeking feedback on your work. And because that could benefit you in more ways than one. It says here, coordinating the frequency of these meetings yourself could be helpful for both you and your boss who has likely has it on their plate. Finally, someone recognizes that bosses have a lot on their plate. And if you're not used to setting up these meetings on a regular basis and checking with people a lot, then uh, it, it makes sense. And you're busy and your busyness hasn't changed. And now we got we got to do more stuff for our employees which is, you know, something that entrepreneurs just have to deal with and get over and like adjust your business so that you can stay relevant and continue to hire people. Uh, well, it says here that, you know, it's also not just on the boss. So, you know, if you're a young person and or any stylist out there that's listening that wants feedback, you should coordinate the frequency of these meetings yourself uh, so that both you and your boss can figure it out. And at the end of the day, the employee needs to take ownership of the career and don't expect your boss to do it for you. Remember, you are an entrepreneur, whether you want to admit it or not, which means you need to take responsibility for this. Now, if you're met with an unsavory or unsatisfactory response, then maybe that's the sign you need to get packing and find the place for you. You know, at the end of the day, this is a relationship. All right. We need to figure this out. And um, a lot of it has to do with just talking a lot, like talking a lot more than we've ever talked. So tell me what you think of the news. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. If there's any story that you think I should include uh, or should have included, I'd love to hear or a topic you'd like to hear more on. Uh, otherwise, uh, have a good one. All right. See ya.